Hello everyone, welcome to Premium Mechatronics. If this is your first time joining us, I implore you to watch the first few videos in the series for context. Continuing on from the last video in the series, I'll be showing the derivation of the Arduino controller gains and how they are implemented. In the last video, I determined the relationship between the system's input and output, thus deriving its transfer function, and using Python and MATLAB, I interpreted and extracted the relevant information. Since the last video, I've switched over from an Arduino Nano to an Arduino Mega and I've also added an SD card reader to log the angular velocity data directly to a text file. As I briefly introduced in the first part of the series, I'll be trying to design a PID controller for this system. Now there are three parts to a standard or ideal PID controller, and they are the proportional term, the integral term, and the derivative term, hence PID. Later I'll show why in practice this configuration doesn't work too well and then I'll display the alternative. Here we declare the function then we call in the um, function the um, function input variables and here um, in this loop I'll just focus right now on the on the else part of the of the if else statements because if statements um, I'll get to those later. Right now, starting with the proportional gain value, which is again just multiplying the gain value and the input error, the integral part, which is in this L statement here, is just the um, the sum total of all the error values, which is accruing over time multiplied by a gain value, and the derivative term is just the difference between the input and the um, between the current error and the past error, again accruing over time multiplied by a gain value. And these three gain values are then summed up and returned to form the PID, the raw PID gain value, which will be sent to the motors. Since the last time, I've created a UI, um, a GUI, to help visualize the um, plot data instead of having all the different plots scattered around. We now have just one center where we can see all the plots and all the different transfer functions displayed out in in the text boxes and the plots on the axes. Um, it's not it's nowhere near done. It, there's still more to do with this, and just um, just to show the functionality and where it's at, or show where it's at right now. Let's see if this will work. So we load in the data file. How long will it take? Well, I'll just skip through and save you the time. So now we have the, the data being visualized in the topmost plot in the input data section. So we can choose different controller types. You can choose uh, whether to create a, a proportional controller, a, pro, a proportional integral controller, a PID controller, a PID end controller. Um, so right now it's PID since that's the only one that actually works right now. Um, so we can run it and and we'll see it produce a linear, a linear approximation, or rather a non-linear approximation, but no, that's slightly more complex. But I'm using um, a non-linear regression um, from all the data points um, available over here. We can smooth this out, as I showed in um, the last video. It's the smoothed out data um, that has a nice line running through it. We can see some um, trun truncation here, and when doesn't get all the points, but more, this more or less represents the sh overall shape. Um, we have the initial transfer function of this new, um, of, of this data, of this shape um, being produced here. And then we have our PID gain values that have been calculated behind the scenes um, by our GUI, and that is then displayed here. So now we can. Um, find the closed loop step response of this controller and this system and plot it out here. Closed loop step response of our system plotted out on this axis here and some and most important step data are these the ones that we that correlates with the 
um, with the requirements that we give the system, that I give the system, um, which I did behind the scenes since uh, I need to add that to the GUI somewhere in the, somewhere um, here, create some space where I'd um, give the user the ability to um, input their desired um, response characteristics. Um, but either way, what I chose was um, a rise time of 0 0.05 and an, an overshoot that is less than 10%. And it seems to, and this is 0 0.0026, and this is um, 9.01. So this controller design here, or this controller meets our design specifications now. How did I determine the design targets? To be honest, those are those were um, determined rather arbitrarily. 